Hello and welcome back to FED Learning. Standalone components streamline building Angular applications while enhancing performance. Since they don't require an ng module, we can build and use components without declaring them in an ng module. So this video covers the standalone components feature introduced in Angular 19, which is enabled by default. We will dive into the basics of standalone components and demonstrate how to integrate them into other components. So first, let's talk on evolution of standalone component. In Angular, components are the fundamental building blocks. Normally, when we create a new component, it must be declared in the module where it's being used. But with Angular 14 and later, we can create standalone components that can be used independently without being part of any ng module. So, Angular 14 introduced standalone components in developer preview. By Angular 15, they became stable. And from Angular 15 to 16, we could create standalone components using the ng generate component component name hyphen hyphen standalone command. Starting with Angular 17, the ng generate component component name command creates standalone components by default by adding component property standalone true. And with Angular 19, all components are standalone by default eliminating the need to add component property standalone true to your code. And when you update the existing code to Angular 19, the ng update command automatically updates your code. You don't need to take any explicit action. That we have already seen while migrating Angular application from version 18 to 19. Now let's go inside Visual Studio code and create a new component in the Angular 19 application. Inside Visual Studio code, I have created an Angular 19 application. So inside package.json, you can see that this project is running on version 19. Okay. Now let me open terminal and here I'll create new component inside this project. And from Angular 19 onwards, components are standalone by default. So here to create the component, I'll use command ng generate component component name test. Enter. And here you can see the test component has been created successfully. Now, inside this test component.ts file, you can see that there is no standalone true property under the add the rate component decorator. This is because from Angular 19 onwards, standalone true is the default. Also, you can see the same thing inside app.component.ts file. Under this add the rate component decorator, there is no standalone true property available. Now, if I want to reuse this test component in app component, I need to add the selector of test component to the app component. And the selector is defined in the test component.ts file, that is app-test. So let me add this selector to the app component file here. Before this router outlet, I'll add app test. Okay. So I have added the test component selector inside app component.html file. Now save the changes and let me add some new text in both components. This is test component. Save the changes and uh, inside app component.html here I'll add one h1 tag and inside this I'll write the text. This is app component. And as of now, I'll just comment out this router outlet and save the changes. And now let's try to run this project with command ng serve or ngs. Hit enter. So here you can see we are getting an error on line number two that is on test component selector. If you want to render the test component inside app component, then first we need to import that component inside app.component.ts file. So here inside imports array, I need to import test component with an import statement. This test component import from test slash test dot component. And now you can see error has gone. But Angular 19 now prompts an error to remove unused imports. So we are not using router outlet. So as of now, I'll delete this and now save the changes. And now you can see there is no error. So let me open browser on localhost 4200. 
and here you can see the content of both user component as well as app component this is app component and this is test component and now if i want to use star ng if directive inside this app component so here let me declare one variable is login of type boolean equals to true and i want to use this is login variable inside h1 tag i'll use star ng if directive and i'll pass this is login variable inside this ng if now save the changes and you can see we are getting an error can't bind to ng if since it is not a known property of h1 and to fix this error we need to import common module inside this imports array now save the changes you can see error has gone and you can see the output of both components so it means if you want to use any dependencies for this app component then first we have to import it inside this imports array and then we can use it for that component okay so without standalone component we had to declare all components inside this declaration section and require dependencies inside this imports array or imports section within a at the rate angular module like this and this made it difficult to identify which components relied on each other but now with standalone component we can clearly see the dependencies for each component and the standalone component optimize angular application development by reducing the need for ng modules and this approach helps to eliminate unnecessary imports and unused dependencies which can increase bundle sizes so that's all for this video thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to fad learning for quick and easy learning bye bye